trends in the periodic table? Well, you can discover the trends in the periodic table by simply looking at the data book. All you have to do is to look up the page entitled Densities to see what the trend in densities is. Or Melting Points and Boiling Points page, which is page 4. Or there's Covenant Radius, or Ionization Energy, Electronegativity. All the trends can be found simply by consulting the book. However, what you won't find in the book is an explanation for the trends. Let's take covalent radius, which is more simply expressed as atom size. To all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. Now, what is a trend in atom size, and what do we mean by covalent radius? Well, covalent radius, as it implies, is the radius, which is half the, half the diameter of an atom, but it's the radius in a covalent bond. And we can see that when the two atoms overlap, the midpoint isn't quite at the edge of the atom. So the covalent radius, strictly speaking, is half the distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms. How does the size of an atom change across a period and down a group? Well, let's take across a period first of all. If we look at the second row of the periodic table, that's the elements going from lithium over to neon, what do we find? Well, we only have to consult the data book to discover that as we go across the table, surprisingly, atom size decreases. It's contrary to what a lot of people think. However, having said that, you will not find a value for neon in the data book or any noble gas because the noble gases don't form bonds like this and therefore no values are available. Having said that, the trend nevertheless is for there to be a decrease in atom size. And this begs the question why? Why do atoms become correspondingly smaller across the table? Well, we need to look at what's inside these atoms. In the case of a lithium atom, it has three positive protons in the nucleus and three negatively charged electrons outside. These electrons, remember, are arranged in shells or energy levels. In this case, the pattern is 2-1. As we work across the table, the number of protons increases. And therein lies the reason why the atoms become smaller. Because as the number of protons increases to the point where there are 10 protons in neon, the pooling power, the attractive force of these, these protons greatly increases. You have to imagine these protons are pooling in the negatively charged electrons. Well, it follows that three protons will not pull nearly as strongly as ten protons. The pooling power of the protons in the lights of neon is much stronger. That means the outer electrons are pulled in far more strongly. And so the size of the atom decreases. So there we have it. Atoms decrease in size across the table because the number of protons increases. Increasing nuclear attraction is often referred to as. How about down the table? Well, you might think that if we apply that logic down the table, if we increase the number of protons down the table, we might find a similar trend. But that's not the case. If we go from the likes of lithium near the top of group one, to cesium, near the foot of group one, to find there's a big increase in atom size. And that's even though cesium has 55 protons in its nucleus. So why is it, even though this has many more protons, the atom has become larger? The answer is because it's not just more protons, it's more electron shells. Lithium, we said, had this pattern, 2-1 two layers of electrons. Cesium, however, has a much more complicated pattern and the pattern can be found by consulting the data book. It says here 2-8-18-18-8-1. That's a lot of electron layers. The atom is swelling in size. The nucleus is effectively shielded or rather the outer electrons are shielded from this nucleus by all these inner layers of electrons. So there we have it. 
atoms get bigger as we go down a group because there are an increasing number of electron layers, the electrons being shielded from the nucleus. Atoms get smaller across the table because the pulling power of the nucleus increases. It's worth taking a few seconds to look at ion size as well as atom size. Take, for example, two, um, two ions. Let's take ions which are neighbouring ions in the, or neighbouring atoms in the periodic table. Suppose, for example, we compared aluminium with silicon. Now, these are elements which are next to each other in the table. Aluminium has 13 protons, element 13. Silicon, 14 protons. Obviously, aluminium has 13 electrons and silicon, 14 electrons. Their atom size will be very similar. It will look doubtless say in the book that atoms are virtually identical in terms of size. But what about iron size? That's a different story. Iron size. We have to ask ourselves, what will happen when aluminium forms an iron? Well, it has 13 electrons, arranged 2, 8, 3. When aluminium forms an ion, it loses its 3 out electrons to produce a stable structure, which means it ends up with a 3 plus charge. That's because it now has only 10 electrons and 13 protons. Silicon, on the other hand, is likely to gain electrons. It has the pattern 2, 8, 4, and therefore it could gain four electrons, if it did so, if it was to gain four electrons, it would have a stable pattern, it would have gone up to 18 electrons in total, giving it a four negative charge. Now, although they started out as atoms of similar size, we have ions of vastly different size. The aluminium ion will be much smaller than the atom because it's lost its three outer electrons. Whereas this will be bigger because it's gained electrons. So, their atoms may have had similar sizes, but their ions have a very different size indeed. This is a 3 plus ion, this is a 4 negative ion.